Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on kinematics. The topic of this video is describing motion with diagrams. When you're done with this video, you'll know the answers to the question, what is a dot diagram and how can it be used to describe a constant speed or changing speed motion? And you'll know what is a vector diagram and how it can be used to describe constant or changing speed motion. Let's get started. Now a dot diagram shows the position of the car at one second intervals of time and it shows it by representing the car's position with a dot. So if we have a car that's traveling with a constant speed what we would expect is that we would have a car that travels the same distance in every one second of time. So here we see such a car that's traveling to the right and we see the position of the car at one second intervals of time. Now what we need to do is we need to pick a reference frame or at least a point on the car to locate its position. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick the front tire of the car to, to represent the location of a car and we're going to place a dot down at the car's front tire's location at each consecutive second of time. The dots would look something like you see right there. So that's the dot pattern for an object that's moving to the right with a constant speed. It's covering the same distance every second, so as we might expect, we would note that, we would note that the dot spacing, the distance between consecutive dots, is an equal spacing. And that's what we see in that diagram. Now we're going to contrast that with a speeding up style motion. If an object is speeding up, what we would expect is it would be increasing the distance traveled in each consecutive second. So if we take a peek at this animation, we'll see a car that's traveling to the right. And we see the position of the car at one second intervals of time. But because it's speeding up each consecutive second, it's going to travel a further distance than it did the second before. And so you notice that on the, on the, on the diagram in the animation, the car's traveling further in each consecutive second. And once more, we're going to pick that front tire of the car to represent the location or position of the car. And we notice in the, in the animation that that distance from front tire at zero second to front tire at one second to front tire at two seconds and so forth, it's increasing. This is an object that's moving to the right with an increasing speed and what we expect or what we observed is that the dot spacing is increasing over the course of time. Now we're going to look at a dot diagram for slowing down motion. So an object that's slowing down is decreasing its speed. The distance traveled in each consecutive second is smaller than the second before. It's decreasing over the course of time. So if we look at this car, it's moving to the right and it's decreasing its speed or slowing down. And what we see is the position of the car at one second time intervals. Now the distance from 0 to 1 second is a larger distance from 0 to 2 seconds. What we're going to do here is we're going to pick the front right tire of the car and call that the position. And if we look at 0 to 1 seconds and compare it to 1 to 2 seconds and 2 to 3 seconds and so forth, we notice that those distances traveled in each consecutive second is decreasing. So it gives us a dot diagram that looks something like this. Now that dot diagram is characteristic of any slowing down motion. And what is characteristic of it is that the spacing between consecutive dots is decreasing over the course of time. So now we've seen constant speed, we've seen speeding up, and we've seen slowing down motions. And here's a summary of it. Constant speed has a constant distance or spacing between consecutive dots. Increasing speed has an increasing spacing. And finally, decreasing speed has a decreasing spacing between dots. And that's a summary of dot diagrams. Now it's your turn to practice. We've seen moving to the right dot diagrams. Now we're going to have you practice a moving to the left dot diagram. So you'll notice in the three diagrams we have here, the dot starts on the right side, and the motion of the object will be from that right side of the screen towards the left side of the screen. So I'd like you to draw a dot diagram for a constant speed and increasing speed and a decreasing speed motion. And what you should do is just kind of pause the video right now and solve the problem or draw the dots, at least think it through in your mind, and then when you're ready, Turn on the video and play it to see if you got it right. You can do it. Okay, well, let's see how you did. For a constant speed motion, what we'd expect is the dots moving towards the left would be spaced equally far apart. 
for a increasing speed motion, we would expect that the second that the second dot that is drawn is a little closer to the first dot, the third dot is less close to the second dot and so forth. In other words, reading this diagram from the left from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen, we would be seeing the dots increasing over the course of time. And the decreasing speed is just the opposite. And there you see it in the diagram, something like that. How'd you do? Now we're going to talk about velocity vector diagrams. You recall that velocity is a vector, and being a vector, it has a magnitude and direction. We draw vector diagrams to represent the magnitude of the velocity and the direction of the velocity. We place little arrows on our dot diagrams. The direction of the arrow tells us the direction of the velocity. The rule for velocity is if an object's moving to the right, the arrow would go to the right because that's the direction of the velocity. The length of the arrow tells you something about the magnitude of the velocity, that is how fast it's going or how slow it's going. So longer arrows tell us that we have a faster velocity and a shorter arrow tells us we have a smaller velocity, a slower object. Both of these situations that we see here are for constant speed motion. And we know that because the length of the arrow isn't changing over the course of time. Now let's look at a changing speed situation, a speeding up object. Here we see such a diagram. You'll notice if you look at those arrows that over the course of time they're getting longer. The object's moving from left to right, so the velocity's to the right. That's the direction of the arrow. And initially it's zero, and finally it's a lot bigger. So that's a speeding up object. We represent the direction and the size of the velocity by the length and the direction of an arrow. Now we're going to look at the velocity vector diagram for an object that is slowing down. Such an object has a decreasing speed. The magnitude of its velocity is getting smaller over the course of time. So we're going to represent the velocity vector diagram using an arrow that gets smaller over the course of time. Its length decreases, and the direction of the arrow is in the direction that the object moves. So as you see here in this diagram, the object is moving towards the right, that's the direction the arrow points, but it's slowing down because the size of that velocity vector is decreasing over the course of time. So let's summarize. Here's what we would expect for a velocity vector diagram for an object that's moving to the right at constant speed. The size of the arrow is constant and the direction of the arrow is to the right. Here's what we would expect for moving to the right with an increasing speed. The size of the arrow is increasing because it's increasing speed and the direction of the arrow is to the right. And here's what we expect for decreasing speed the size of the arrow is decreasing in length, and the direction of the arrow is to the right. Now, I hope you got this because it's now your turn to practice. We're going to have you construct the vector diagram for a car moving to the left with a constant speed, an increasing speed, and a decreasing speed. So pause the video here. Think about how you would do that, maybe even, even draw it out on a scratch paper for a dot that starts on the right side of the screen is going to continue towards the left, and then draw the dots, and then draw the arrows. And when you're done, play the video, and let's see how you did. Okay, we're ready to check it. Let's see how you did. For a constant speed, you have drawn the dots equally spaced. You have drawn the arrows to the left since it's moving to the left, and every arrow has the same length. Give the arrows a label, V for velocity. For an increasing speed, you would draw the dot starting from the right and going to the left with an increasing spacing. The size of the arrows would increase in length as you go from the right side towards the left side and the direction of the arrow point points left. Give it a label, V for velocity. And finally, for decreasing speed, we'll note that the dots get increasingly closer together. Their spacing decreases over the course of time. The arrows point to the left since the object's moving to the left, and the length of that arrow decreases because the object's slowing down or decreasing its velocity or speed. Hope you did it right. 
On occasion, you'll be asked to draw a dot diagram and asked to draw numbers on the dot diagram. Numbers, for instance, for position and for time. Like here, an object moves rightward with a speed of 4 meters per second for 5 seconds. Draw the dot diagram and label the positions. So you'll notice how I've done that. I've first drawn the dots equal spacing apart because the speed is a constant 4 meters per second. I've drawn dots that are 4 meters apart. I've labeled them as such starting with 0. Since they didn't give me any starting position, I just arbitrarily decided, well, it starts at 0 meters. That's common. And then I would put dots 4 meters, 8 meters, 12 meters, 16 meters, and 20 meters for the times of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 seconds. So that's an example of adding dot diagrams, or adding numbers to your dot diagrams. Here's a second example. Starting now at the 12 meter mark, so they give me a starting position. An object moves left, this time the object's moving left, at 3 meters per second, meaning every second travels a position change of 3 meters towards the left. And this happens for 6 seconds. So I'm going to draw the dot diagram beginning by drawing out a little number line for instance and putting the 12 meter mark on the right side of the number line and that's my starting dot. It starts at 12 meters. Okay, you see it there. I've done it right there. And then every meter towards the left of 12 I'm going to put a new dot. So that means a dot at 9 meters, since 9 meters on a number line would be to the left of 12 meters. And I'm going to continue that process. You notice how I'm adding the numbers for time and position. So 6 meters is 3 meters to the left of 9, and then 3 meters is 3 meters to the left of 6, and 0 meters is 3 meters to the left of 3, and so forth. And I do this up to the 6 second mark. So that's a second example of drawing dot, adding numbers to dot diagrams. All right, we did it. We've answered the questions, what is a dot diagram and how can we use it to describe a constant speed and a changing speed motion? And we've learned how to draw vector diagrams for the same two types of motions. It's at this time of every video that I like to give you some sort of action plan as to what you can do next. I like to help you solidify your learning. But before I help you, I'd like to ask you if you could help us a little bit. First of all, if you like the video, why don't you just hit the like button down below? Second, why don't you subscribe to our channel? You'll get notifications of new videos when they come out this year, and there's going to be a lot of them. And finally, if you have a question, why don't you leave a question down in the comments section, or any comment you like. Now, here's the action plan. Something that you can do to solidify that learning that you've started right now from watching this video. First thing, students love concept builders, and at our website we have a collection of concept builders, and there's two in particular that I think might be of interest to you. They both require a little bit more than the velocity vector diagrams we've been talking about. You'll also have to draw acceleration vector diagrams, but those, those little concept builders are called motion diagrams and dots and graphs. And you're going to find them at our website. If you go to the Concept Builder section and then tap on Kinematics, you'll see links to those two concept builders. You'll love them. Then, if you're a Minds on Physics user, you can get the Minds on Physics app number one onto your phone or tablet. And once on there, you can practice the oil drop representation, which is kind of another name for dot diagrams. You'll find it on app number one. There are three modules on app number one, and the first one's called Kinematic Concepts. And if you open that one up, you can go to Mission KC5 called Oil Drop Representations. That will help you out considerably. And finally, the last thing that you can do if you need to is you can go to our website, and the first link on the top of the page is called Physics Tutorial. And you can just go in and use the lesson number two as sort of a review and a reference to this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Come back and see some more videos. Thank you.